to C2F, that's Concept of Fashion. I'm Aaron Gomes, and that's Gomes with an S. And I'm Karen O'Rell, and we're here today with the fabulous Fred Sweet, the creator of the La Jolla Fashion Film Festival. Today, we're going to be learning more about the man behind the gathering of one of the largest film festivals in the world. So, Fred, great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here today. So this is an incredible year for you. It's the 10 year anniversary of the show. And you've got, I'm sure, some fabulous things planned. But tell us a little bit about who's been your greatest support system over the years for the show. Well, the community that we have formed over the years is really the support system that we go by. And the, any festival producer will tell you that uh, it's an all-year project, and it certainly has its ups and downs. Uh, many people say, you know, fashion uh, ha is like a happy face, and then you kind of don't see what is behind it all. So um, it's the same thing, you know, with the festival. And uh, when that, when these type of, uh, you know, trying uh, incidents or things happen, the uh, community always somehow says, you know, Fred, you know, it's so fabulous, we're, we're collaborating, it's so wonderful that we came to your festival and we met other people and we're making more money. And so when, when uh, the, the point of La Jolla is that we want to empower creative professionals around the world. That's our whole goal. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when, when I get positive, authentic feedback that that's happening, that, that's really, it gives me the energy and support. Nice. It's, it's been incredible so far. Yeah, really, really great turnaround. Mm -hmm. So this is going on now, like we just mentioned, coming up on 10 years. Mm -hmm. In all that time throughout your career, is there anything that you would have changed or done differently? Well, it's, it's kind of funny you ask that. I remember the very first year that I started it, I said to myself, I wonder what huge mistakes I'm making right now. <laughs> and I said, well, I probably won't know them for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, although I'm not a prophet, that did come true. <laughs> and so I, I would say uh, some of the things, uh, I, I would, you know, without going into the you know, details, the dramatic details, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the things that I focus on now are, are not the things that I focused on in, in year one. So uh, it, it's a learning process and I would say for something you know this big and, and take this much commitment, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it takes, you have to really have the uh, why you're doing it mm -hmm. uh, very set in your mind. Um, otherwise it, it really won't work. There's, there's mm -hmm. too many distractions, there's you know cash crunches, there's um, you know there's personalities from all over the world so uh, if you have a, a vision, which uh, ours was to create a, a global collaborative creative community mm -hmm. that would be supportive, and I've told the, the directors this over all of the years, and that is, that is what we've done. So uh, for, that now is, is, uh, ha has been our guiding light for many, many years since the beginning. So when I keep that in focus, um, everything else falls into place. That's important. Well, I know your style's changed over the years during the, the whole process of doing the fashion industry and the fashion shows and the International Film Festival. And Who would you say has most influenced your, your style? Do you mean my personal fashion uh -huh. style? Mm -hmm. And how has that changed over the years? Uh, well, I, it, that's really hard to say. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I, you know, um, one, um, I mean, just as a, as a, a personal um, kind of mentor person, uh, it, the um, it kind of went uh, between um, uh, Ralph Lauren and I, I did you know really like his style, and then uh, I, I you know with uh, Carl of course uh, you know he he was just an icon and I, I I called him the philosopher king of of fashion because he he really uh, he had this concept of uh, living uh, now and in in the future he always said he wasn't interested in the past he said oh. I don't want to be my own souvenir 
And so, that, so he he also influenced me, but in a philosophical way that I don't I don't focus on the past. Okay, learn from the past, and and then you know just forget it and move on. Yes. And and that that was his philosophy. And uh, so you know between that and just uh, other you know uh, other designers have kind of. Uh, wanted to dress me o over the years. I, I, it, sometimes I, I thought it was a good idea. I, I never really <laughs> w was focused on it in, in particular. I, I could tell you this, sometimes I, after 10 years, I look back on some of the uh, imagery from it and I go, oh my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> was I really wearing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I cannot believe it. So, <laughs> make um, that video and those pictures disappear. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, I think some people, it would make them more, uh, you know, wild with their dress. But mm -hmm. me, it's kind of, uh, you know, I can't do that, I can't do that, that looks stupid. So then I, I started to be kind of a little bit even more conservative. So uh. um, it, it, it's, uh, it, but I, I'm i not limiting myself. You know, maybe I'll show up with some weird painted suit. You know? <laughs> we have to stay That's tuned yeah. for yeah. that. How, oh, I'd love yeah. to see that this year. <laughs> that would be great for the ten year. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm voting for the painted suit. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, <laughs> There's two votes. Be, there might How be about one. airbrush? Airbrush <laughs> yes, painted suit. Yes, yes. There, there is someone doing that, yeah. Oh, okay. There, you always find some really wild styles there. It's, it's a treat, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's a real treat to see the different styles that they go out to and they dress up. And it's just their own style added into everybody's mm -hmm. outfit. I love it. Well, and part of that's because it is such a big international thing. You've got yeah. flavors from Central America, South America, Europe, and even mm -hmm. Asia. All these different uh, cultural flavors coming in through the clothing mm -hmm. that's appearing at the show. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say this. Uh, you know, the the way the red carpet and and the people that come from all around the world, they're they've really you know, with the Instagram being global mm -hmm. and the Hoyas of Global Festival, there's less, I would say, regionality to mm -hmm. the uh, outfits than ever before uh, because everyone just sees everything. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's, uh, one of these uh, famous designers said that there's really no more uh, subcultures of fashion. Interesting. Be because mm -hmm. you know, there's just, Everyone see it's like one big uh, group. Yeah. Everyone's looking at the same stuff. So it's becoming more homogeneous. Yeah. Well, they say that fashion is becoming more individual. It, it, you know, versus you know, forty years ago, it was a, a trend based, mm -hmm. and uh, it, you could say it was a designer based. Um, so now it's going more towards personal style. Mm. And and not uh, exactly fashion. You know, there there's still all you know the the legacy systems, and they're yes. still coming out with the color trends, and and you know they uh, they're obviously still analyzing the uh, collections. You you can get all of that, um, but you know I tell you one if some of these fashion shows, uh, you know the uh, uh, episodics on television, you know you'll see one um, uh, group of designers, and they say. Oh, you know, my my DNA is is this. You know, it's modernistic, it's minimalist, and the next person they interview, just as successful, say, "I reinvent myself every year." Yeah. So you just kind of <laughs> go, "What? You know, you know, what what is it? Mm. You know, is right. is there a, a brand identity, or mm. is the brand identity just reinventing itself every year?" That's where we're at in fashion right now. Yeah, that makes sense. And so, kind of yeah. going back a little bit to that global scheme and tying it back into the festival, how many countries are actually being represented? Do you know? Well, there's, over the years, there's been hundreds. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we, we've we had people from all over the world. Mm. About how many submissions do you get each year from the Well, we, for, for years, we got about 11,000, and that's the ones that we reviewed and people submitted. Um, but it, this year, and a little bit in the previous year, it really got to be too much. Mm -hmm. So uh, La Jolla has was always a uh, free submission for mm -hmm. the whole time, but it 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 just got to be uh, crazy because people would they would see on these um, different platforms they would see free and they would they wouldn't even look at what they were doing you know they were so excited about getting their film into a festival they would just hit submit and you know we would get these films on you know how to fix your carburetor and, and <laughs> it, you know. 
So, uh, and you know, but we would still have to at least look at them yeah. to see that it, that's what it was. So it was taking, you know, staff time and, and, and effort and everything. And so uh, this year, it wasn't a big deal. It, it, we started charging $35, which is the world standard uh, yeah. for it. And, and that really, really did uh, cut down. So it's in the thousands now. Okay. Um, and but that you got rid of the carburetors. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Car we did. <laughs> yes, and the horticulture. Oh. I have nothing against those. I, I like carburetors. <laughs> and I like plants. But it's just, we're not for that. <laughs> That's so. Wrong submission. Mm -hmm. Right. And make sure that you all catch us next time for another episode of C2F. I've been your host, Aaron. And I'm Karen Orell. Thanks for coming today.